What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Team Fish Knuckles YouTube channel. Today we have Tennessee States round number one. And before we actually get to each one of these games for states, we're going to go over the deck list so you know, understand a little bit about their deck and what's actually in them. Now, on the left side, we actually have Drew Kate, and he's playing the Night March My Loaded deck. Now, Night March, we've seen it multiple times. It's taken states by storm, but Night March, 20 damage, or 20 damage times the number of Night March. Night March attackers and your discard pile. So if you have 8, you do 160, 9, 180. And it's a very, very fast deck. It's probably one, if not the best deck at the current format. But Drew is playing my Lodic with his deck. We kind of saw this during the city format with these sparkling ripples. When you play this Pokemon from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon, you may put a card from your discard pile into your hand. This will get you any of the cards that you have in your discard pile. If you have a puzzle time in your hand, a cool thing you could do is sparkling ripples for puzzle time and then puzzle time for two cards if you want to, uh, which could be really neat uh, if you have that kind of combo pull off. But Drew played a, you know, a target whistle to bring a Pokemon out of the discard pile, AZ to maybe use, reuse the Milotic or Shaman's, the Rosic, uh, the Megaphone, puzzle time to get 82 cards out of his discard pile if he uses both of those, Hex Maniac maybe for the Trevenant decks, uh, Fighting Fury Belt to give us basic Pokemon 40 more HP and they do 10 more damage and uh, like I said this is a a very very strong deck it has seen a lot of success in the uh in the states format but if you give me one more second we'll see the deck on the right and see what they're playing all right so on the right side we actually have myself playing i'm actually playing the best queen file plume deck we saw me or you heard me play about it last week in that mississippi states but now going to tennessee states i've made two changes to the deck i cut a gloom for a Silent Lab, and I cut a Sycamore for the Silent Lab. A Silent Lab says each basic player's Pokemon and uh, each basic Pokemon to play in each player's hand, each player's discard pile has no abilities. It's because I was scared of Aegislash. Aegislash kind of makes it where Vestal Queen can't really hurt it, and Fright Night Evil Tall could Life Center but a Vile Bloom and make it where tools don't work. So the Silent Lab could get around it. And you can start, you can't stop other, you know, uh, Pokemon as well because usually at the first game. You really don't need Forest of Giant Plants that much, so Silent Lamp could sh shut down like Shamans, Unknowns, uh, all the basic Pokemon abilities if you need to. Uh, we've seen the deck multiple times, but uh, hopefully you enjoyed this introduction. If Let me know if you like this or not. Like I said, we're going to try to get all the deck lists from each player and showcase them up before the video so we know what we're go going to expect. Uh, but hopefully you enjoy this, and let's see the match right now. Alright, so here we are, Tennessee State's round number one. Like I said, on the left we have Drew Kate, and on the right we have myself, Josh, Squeaky, Marking. We know that Drew is playing the Night March Milotic deck with tar Target Whistle and everything with Puzzle Time. And on the right we have the Vest Queen Vileplume deck. Now this matchup is kind of weird. If the Night March player can go off turn number one, they can easily win this game. And here we see, okay, we see that Drew is going first. Start of the Feebas, probably not who he really wants to start. We see he trained his mouth. Go look at top four cards of his deck. Pick a trainer card. He has an Ultra Ball. Gonna grab that. Maybe get out a Shaman. There's a Lamp Hit being discarded and an AZ. And like I said, this might grab a Shaman or a Night Marcher if he doesn't have a Night Marcher in his hand already. And, uh, yeah, I mean, he needs to get the Feebas out of the active spot because if he's stuck there, he has to waste our energy on it to retreat the following turn. We did see him discard an AZ. Uh, we see him eyeballing Joltik. Maybe he's trying to count how many Night Marches in there. But there's a Joltik. And I did see a Fighty Fear Belt in his discard pile. Maybe he wants to make sure to get that Fighty Fear Belt on the Joltik before we get down um, the Vile Foam. So there's Fighty Fear Belt going to the Joltik. Shebe. So he already had the Shaman in his hand. Uh, looks like he's drawn up to six. He's got a DCE. Another Shaman in his hand. So there's DCE. There's a Puzzle Time. Going to reuse the top three cards of his deck any way he wants to. Maybe to make sure he gets... Well... He has four cards in his hand, so either way, if he plays that Shaman, he's going to draw those three. And he has a Sycamore as well in his hand. I do see it. So Shaman going to draw three. He has an Ultra Ball, Milotic, and something else. Maybe he wants to get into the Night Marcher out. Maybe get into the Feebas. Um, there we see a Battle Presser. Okay, that's a great card. Going to discard some Lampets, most likely. So there's one Lampet. And there's two Lampets. And he already discarded one, so he might discard a third. But maybe the third one is prized. Or maybe it's in his hand. Who knows? But he discards a Joltik. Uh, go ahead and discard that. Alright. And you really don't want to attack with Joltik because they have 30 HP. And all I have to do is Sky Return with the Shaman. I uh, did knock out a Joltik. So there we see an Ultra Ball. Discard a Sycamore and a Hex Maniac. And let's see what Drew goes for. Does he go for another Shaman? And yes, he is going to go for a Shaman. And now this is the bad thing about Night March and Vesquee Valplume. Their turn ones last forever. All right, so we're going to see a cut. And all right, Shaman going to drop to six. I think he has, I'm not sure uh, how many cards. I mean, he should have six cards in his hand regardless. Three, four, five, six. Yeah, I see six. 
Uh, he has a VS Seeker. He could VS Seeker for Hex Maniac turn one, making it where we can't play our our shamans or unknowns and have a really bad rough start. So yeah, there's oh he's actually going for a Sycamore, discarding a DC Mylodic and some other stuff. Okay. So he's actually down two DCE turn number one. Uh, maybe he wants to get the speed best out of the active spot. Like I said, if we do get a Vest Queen down, it uh, makes it where, or Valpum down, he can't retreat this speed best unless he wastes an energy on it. Never see Battle Compressor go discard three cards out of his deck. Uh, we see Drew wants to see his discard pile. I actually picked up Drew's discard pile and started reading what the uh, the flavor text of the Pokemon did. You see there, I go back reading what the cards do, or their flavor text, like what is Lampets? Um, I think it has to do something outside the hospital. And Milotic is the most beautiful Pokemon, if you don't know that. That's what it says on the bottom of the text. Uh, but we see Drew using Battle Compressor. Gun discard three cards out of his deck. Maybe some trainer cards that he doesn't need past turn two. Or past turn one. I see him eyeball on Battle Compressor. And that's going to be it. Just the Battle Compressor. You get discard up to three, so one is fine. Okay. And uh, let's see. Does Drew have a way to retreat this Feebas or not? There's a Pokeboo coming down. And... Looks like a pass. So on my turn, that was a long term one for Drew. It's even two times speed. So there's an unknown coming down. There's a float stone going down to the unknown. So that's great. Force of giant plants. All right. And there's Sycamore discarding two Vileplume and a Vespa Queen. Now if our third Vileplume is prized, we will be in trouble. There's a Kombi coming down. Um, There's a Shaman in my hand. But I really have a bunch of cards in my hand. So Shaman going to draw. Looks like one. Yep. Just one card. A Kombi coming down. Feral letter, uh, retreat to a combi. Feral letter, and I see a DC in my hand. I don't think I have anything else. I see a gloom, and yeah, just a pass to Drew. So uh, not that eventful start for my uh, my end. Okay, so on to Drew's turn. He has a life center in his hand. Maybe he wants to take a knockout. So they receive a DC retreat to Feebas. Now Drew has wasted or has used up to three DCs. He sees knockout on the Shaman, and on my turn we get a combi. Silent Lab, and we'll just pass, okay. So now it's a Drew's turn. <laughs> now you might be wondering why I dropped the Silent Lab if you notice there's a Forest in my hand. I was basically just playing the Silent Lab, the next turn playing the Forest, so maybe if we draw into a Shaman who could draw more. We see a Night March for the, uh, the, the Joltik, taking a knockout. There's a Forest coming down, going to bump on Silent Lab. DCE, Ultra Ball, discarding two cards. I'm not sure what those are, a Gloom and a Sycamore maybe? I imagine this will get a Shaman for sure. And that's why I discard, like, I play the Silent Lab in the Forest of Giant Plants. So that way you can bump a Stadium and draw more. And they receive Shaman going to come down, going to draw, uh, I think, four cards is what it seems like right now. And now Drew has a, sick, a VS Sicker in his hand. I'm not sure if it's been there or not. I imagine if Drew had it, he would have played it. But they receive Shaman drawn up to six. And I do have the third Vile Plume in my hand. All right, so we have an Oddish. I see a Love Ball. I see a Sycamore. There's the Oddish. There's a Battle Compressor, and this Compressor is going to discard all of our Oddishes. We really don't need them anymore. Uh, so there's two Oddishes, and if we have the third one in the deck, we're going to discard that as well. There we go. Now, if you want to, you could keep a more than Oddish in the deck, but we already discarded two Vile Plumes, so there's there's really no way we're going to get another Vile Plume out. It's just going to get knocked out every turn. Uh, we see a Love Ball. This might grab a Gloom or an Unknown. Well, let's see what I decide to get. Or maybe a Vessel Queen, so at least Night March. Or not Night March, Beer Revenge this turn. Alright, so there's a Vest Queen. Now, remember, there are there are two DCs and Drew's discard pile. And Milotic has been discarded as well. Uh, turn one. Alright, so we see Love Ball getting at that Vest Queen out. Maybe we just want to guarantee an attack this turn. Uh, three, okay, yep, there's a bunch of Pokemon to discard pile. And yeah, we're just going to be your event. So yeah, we really didn't do anything. So on to Drew's turn. He has a Zerosic. I see a VS Seeker in there as well. Uh, so Drew has a lot of decisions to make. There's a Dimension Valley bump in our force of giant plants. There's a Pumpkin Boo. Alright. He has an Ultra Ball. We know this is Zerosic. There's a VS Seeker. And there's a VS Seeker. Let's see what Drew decides to get. He could get a Life Center, bring up that Shaman of yours to DCE. But they receive a Sycamore going to his hand. And will he play it or not? Yep, Sycamore discarding a bunch of stuff. He discards the other Feebas. There's a VS Seeker, Joltik, uh, Pumpkin Boo. Did he get the DC or not is the question. Now, remember, like I said, Drew does have three DCs in the discard pile already. But nope, there's the fourth DC coming down, all right? So Drew can Night March's turn, take a knockout on this Vesta Queen. We see a Flow Stone going to the Shea Bay as well to give it free retreat if we do knock out this Pumpkin Boo. We see a Puzzle Time, just going to rearrange the top three. He doesn't have two of them. If he did have two Puzzle Times, he could get back two DCs. That would definitely be the right play. And let's see what Drew decides to do. VS Seeker. And what will he grab? 
and a life center for the next turn, and that basically wins in the game if uh, if we can't knock out this pumpkin boot, because he can life center up the shaman, and let's see what happens, we get the force of giant plants down, we get a DCE, we get a Bunnelby shaman drawn up to six, alright, and what else is, okay, so we have a DCE, we have an ultra ball, there's an unknown, okay, can we get a Vile Plume this turn or not? That's the big question. Like I said, Drew is out of DCs. We have a uh, Feral Letter, Level Ball. Might grab a Gloom. Hopefully we we'll grab a Gloom. Uh, wait, we're debating. Maybe a Vessel Queen, so we can take a knockout this turn on the... Uh, oh, no, there's a Vessel Queen. Like I said, we can take a knockout on this Pokeboo, and Drew doesn't have any more DCs left in his deck currently. Uh, we've seen Ultra Ball, discarding an Ultra Ball, and a Combi. And let's see what this gets us. Maybe a, a Gloom. Maybe a Shebe. Yeah, it looks like I'm eyeballing the Gloom. I think I already have a Shaman in my hand. I think I'm debating what to do. Oh, maybe the Shaman. Maybe I don't have a Shaman in my hand. Yep, gonna grab the Shaman. Alright. And can we make a comeback? I mean, it's 2 to 5 right now. Man, that would be pretty crazy. I'm counting how many cards are left in my deck as well. We're gonna grab the Gloom. Alright. The decision's made. We're grabbing the Gloom. We're gonna see what happens. Go Gloom. Vile Plume. And we're going to see a Beer Revenge for the knockout. So this is kind of scary. We don't have a Flowstone on the Vile Plume, but Drew has less cards than us. So if he likes to use the Vile Plume, he will deck out before us. With C teammates, he's going to look through his deck. Does he have the Mind Lodic in his deck? Uh, we know he does play a 2 2 line. And we saw him discard one. All right. And let's see what does Drew get with this. He's looking through his deck one more time. He gets two cards out of his deck if a Pokemon's knocked out the last turn. What does Drew have? He actually needs like a DC and a Pokemon or a DC and a Dimension Valley. And let's see. Okay, he has a Sycamore Joltic in his hand. What will Drew end up doing? And we see Drew concedes the game. He has he had the last My Lordic prize, so there's no way again DC. There's one, two, three. And he's looking one more time to make sure. And there's the fourth DCE. And if you don't know, states are best two out of three. So we saw Drew kind of lose the game because he was out of DCs. We had a really, really shaky start. And we probably should have lost, but we saw Drew have some kind of, um, you know, have some bad luck there. We really didn't get the Vile Plume out until the last turn of the game. And the reason why, like I said, I went for the Vile Plume, if he licensed the Vile Plume, he would have decked out before us, and there's really no way he was going to attack us anymore. So once I realized that, I was like, "Yeah, we're gonna uh, we're gonna go for this. And we're gonna see what happens." And uh, we were there to win the game. He did have Hex Maniac already in the discard pile, and I while playing this game, I couldn't imagine Drew playing like multiple Hex Maniacs because he does play the Milotic line. He does have to cut some cards in his deck to get that Milotic line. Uh, but we'll see what happens in game number two. Drew did everything correctly. He just didn't get the cards, the right cards at the right time to string the DCs for the time puzzles or the time puzzles to get the DCs out of the discard pile. So he didn't, you know, time puzzle didn't really help him out at all. But on a game number two, I mean, uh, on our side, we need to get the Vile Plum out turn one, which we really didn't see. Drew's side, he needs to have another explosive start. And we'll see what happens. So we're going to cut the deck. And best two out of three, whoever loses, decide to go first or second. And I'm like 99% sure Drew is going to go first. Now, unfortunately, we do have an, an unknown to start once again. It looks like Drew is starting a Joltik this game instead of the Feebas. So that way he doesn't have to waste a DC if he doesn't get the false down. And there's a Joltik and an unknown. All right, so on to Drew's turn. And let's see what happens. Drew will probably have a long eventful turn, number one. Okay. And we see a train. Okay, we see a Battle Compressor. And let's see what Drew decides to discard. All right, so he, okay, so Drew is eyeballing an Ultra Ball, and I, I'm pretty sure I know what's going to happen this turn. I remember it fairly well. Uh, he's going to Ultra Ball. He's going to Battle Press to discard an Ultra Ball and two Lampets. So there's a Lampets, a Lampet, and then an Ultra Ball. Then he's going to Time Puzzle for the Ultra Ball to get it out of the discard pile because he has two Time Puzzles in his hand, as you see right there. There's two Time Puzzles, which is a very, very cool play that you could do with Puzzle Times. Uh, see, yep, a Lampet, Lampet, Ultra Ball. Drew, I'm like, oh, I know what you're doing, Drew. There's no way. Like, as soon as he does this, I'm like, oh, I know what you're doing with those time puzzles. But here we see time puzzle. Going to get the uh, Ultra Ball and the Battle Compressor out of his uh, discard pile. We can see a Battle Compressor. He already discarded two Lampets. There might be a third and another fourth one in the deck. So there's the third one. And does he have the fourth one in the deck? Um, yep, there's the fourth one. So he has four Night Marchers in the discard pile turn one. What else does Drew have? Okay, so he's going to discard a Pumpkin Boo. Probably realize it doesn't really ma I mean, I don't know. I think Joltik's Poku is probably the better attacker because it has more HP and can't be knocked out by a Sky Return. 
I mean, he can't put fighting fear belts on these uh, jolts. Like, we see an Ultra Ball discarding a Sycamore and a Megaphone, maybe? Uh, no, I don't know what that card was. Uh, but we see Shaman going to come down. Maybe the... Maybe the, the uh, the star, yeah, uh, the target whistle. Maybe it was target whistle. It looked like it's something like a megaphone or, or target whistle. But they receive a DC to the active. Shebe going to drop to six. All right. He has an Ultra Ball Feebas. Uh, so he has a Feebas. Okay. And let's see. What does Drew have? He's going to put down the Feebas for sure. I mean, I don't see that being a bad play, really. I mean, we don't play the Lysanders. I don't think Drew knows we don't play Lysanders. So we said Ultra Ball, discarding a Feebas, and a DCE. So once again, he's discarded DCEs. Maybe his hand is just really, really good, and he wants to keep cards in there. Uh, he's going to grab the Shaman. Going to drop some more cards, for sure. All right. Now, remember that Drew does play a 2-2 Milotic line, so it's probably not that big of a deal. We see a Fighting Fruit on the active. Shaman drawn up to four. So there's a Tiger Whistle on his hand. I'm not sure what he discarded turn one, but, well, uh, I'm sorry about that. But we see Trader Smell probably grabbing that Battle Compressor, going to discard three more cards out of his deck. And let's see, what does Drew discard? There is an AZ. I can't see what card that is. A Hex Maniac. Okay, so Hex Maniac. Alright, so Hex Maniac is going to be discarded. And maybe just the Hex Maniac. Maybe it was the Hex Maniac's turn. He Hex Maniac is uh, turn one, so that way we can't play our. Um, you know, we can't use our shamans, we can't use our unknowns, we can't draw through our deck, really. So yeah, going to discard the Hex Maniac, the Battle Compressor, VS Seeker, for the Hex, I imagine that's what's going to happen. Alright, so we see VS Seeker coming on down, we're going to see Drew grab the Hex Maniac, making it where we can't use Shea Bay or Unknown this turn. And on to our turn, let's see what happens, there's a Silent Lab, I'm showing on the act. yeah, I can lock, my, lock myself down too if I want to. But, we see Trader Small. You can look at the top four. There's a forest and a battle compressor. I imagine I, uh, I'm not. Yeah, we'll probably grab the forest. That seems great. Yeah, we'll grab the forest of giant plants. Gonna put that down. Now, what we could do, I'm not sure what happens this turn, but we could put down the sound lab and then next turn put down the forest. And that way he can't use his abilities this turn unless he puts down the Mitch Valley, which might be cool. We see a trainer smell. Gonna look at the top four cards of his deck. We see an acrobike. All right. So the party's gonna keep on going. I'm not sure what just happened. Oh, I dropped a card. That's what happened. Somehow I dropped a card and flew on Drew's side. That's what he picked up. We're going to see an Acrobike. Going to look at the top two cards of our deck. Pick one and discard the other. Going to see, yep, there's the Acrobike. One, two. Discarding the... I'll probably get the Oddish. Uh, so that way we can keep the Ultra Ball in our hand. So yeah, we're going to get down the Oddish. Put the Silent Lab down. Make it where he can't use Shamans. And we'll see a pass. So that's the cool thing with Silent Lab. We are Hex, but now he's basically Hex as well. But we're going to see a Night March for Drew. And on to our turn. Let's see what happens. We do have the Forest. We're going to put that down. We're going to Ultra Ball discarding a DC and a Grass Pokemon. Maybe a Vessel Queen. I imagine if it was a Gloom, we would have put that down. It might be a Fog Gloom. If it was any other card, like a Combi or a Gloom, we would have put it down. So it's either a Vessel Queen or a Vile Plume. All right, and we're seeing, looking through our discard pile, or looking through our deck, we're going to put grab the Shaman, of course. And uh, we're going to set up, drawn. I think it looks like four cards right now. can't really see. Um, the cards are blending together. So, full stone on the act of Shaman. Two, three, four, five. Okay, we get an unknown, unknown. Shaman, draw with three. Okay, there's a Gloom. Now, you notice I have the Vile Plume in my hand, but you really don't want to play it right now. Like, we could play it almost immediately, but you need to thin your deck out with item cards before you actually get a Vile Plume on lock. You gotta remember, there are three Vile Plumes in the deck, so you can Sycamore discard the first one away, and then draw to the other one later on, which is great. Uh, we see Compressor discarding two Oddishes and a Gloom. We have another Gloom uh, Oddish in our hand, which is not that great. And we, unknown, to draw into an Ultra Ball, we discard an uh, Oddish and a, 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 a Vile Plume. Getting the Shade Bay, gonna draw more cards. Alright, I mean, we're on the path right now to get this Vile Plume out, but can we get a Combi uh, uh, and a Vespa Queen? So, Shaman draws some more. Okay. They receive Combi, <laughs> Vespa Queen, DCE. Alrighty, so things are going great for us right now. And I do have the Vile Plume in our hands, so there we go. We're going to treat. And instead of Vespa Queen, put up another down to the Combi. It's like a knockout, going down to five prize cards. So, there we go. Turn two, getting the Vile Plume on lock. And now Drew is in a, uh, in a weird situation. And also, there's a hundred, there's, a, I could do up to 110, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 90, 110. So, Drew is contemplating sending with the Shaman, but then he realized it's going to get knocked out. So, you see a pass from Drew, uh, Be Revenge, taking a knockout, and this game is going to go downhill fairly quickly for Drew. Um, it's not looking good for him. Oh, man. Okay, we'll see what Drew does. He's going to send the Feebas, okay. And I think he has a Milotic in his hand, so he can... Sparkling Ripples this turn, maybe getting a Sycamore. 
We'll see what he decides to do. Or uh, maybe Spark Lipos for Hex Maniac if he has trainer cards in his hand. Okay, let's see what he decides to do. So he's got the Milotic. And let's see what he's sparkling ripples for. Does he get a Pokemon out? Um, Does he get a supporter card out? Does he get a DCE out? I'm not sure how many DCs are in his discard pile as well. I think there's like three, maybe two. I know there's two for sure, but it might be three. There's a Joltik coming out of his discard pile. I pick up his mind loading just to make sure. He's going to put that Joltik back in his hand. And then he's going to, uh, he's like, can I take that back? I'm like, yeah, sure, that's fine. And he grabs a Hex Maniac. So he's going to Hex Maniac. Going to shut our abilities off. Then he's going to use Puzzle Time to get two cards out of his uh, discard pile. There's a Joltik. And probably the DC so he can Night March this turn. Yeah. Oh, a Sycamore. All right, maybe he already has a DC in his hand, or maybe he needs like a Flowstone to. Well, he already played a supporter card, so I'm not sure. Uh, we'll find out here in a second. There's a Joltic DC. It's Switch. Oh, so he had the Switch in his hand, and we'll see a Nightmare taking knockout on the Vessel Queen. But since he hexed us, hexed us, we can now use our trade cards. Trainer cards. We see a DC going out of Shaman. We see a Sycamore discard her hand, draw seven new cards. And this is the cool thing with Shaman against Joltic. You can just, like I said, Sky Return, take a knockout. Uh, we see Compressor going to discard more cards out of our deck. And yeah, we're, we're pretty much good to go. I'm going to discard some cards we really don't need. See it's Acrobike. Look at the top two. Discarding that Acrobike. We do have a DC in our other hand. Yeah, we're going to discard the Acrobike for sure. Trainer's Mill, Ultra Ball. And this Ultra Ball is probably going to give me another Vessel Queen. I'm counting how many cards left my deck. Uh, discarding those two. Going to grab a Vesper Queen. And we should be good to go now. All right, so we're going to see your treat. Sky return for 30, knocking out the Joltik, sending the Shaman with the Flowstone. We really don't care if this gets knocked out. Um, there's really no way Drew can knock it out this turn because he he has to play like an AZ and a DC. He has to have AZ and DC in his hand at the same time. We see a Sycamore discard his hand, drawing seven new cards. There's another Joltik coming down. And we'll see a pass on our turn. DC, the Vestal Queen, and we'll see a Beer Revenge for the knockout, going down to two prize cards. Drew's going to promote that Joltik, and if if he gets a DC this turn, if we have a DC in our hand, we can once again Sky Return, knocking out this Joltik, going down to one prize card, and things are looking great for us. He does have the DC in his deck, so his own teammates grabbing the DC for sure, but does he have another DC for the following turn? I don't think so is the problem. We'll see what happens here in a second. I think he, I'm not sure what he just eyeballed. Uh, maybe he hopes that we don't have a DC in our hand, but I'm pretty sure we do. We have thinned out a deck pretty much a lot. All right, so I'm going to grab those two. Okay, so he has a DC. I'm not sure what the other card was, and he's going to Night March. Okay, oh, oh, hold on a second. Oh, 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 there we go. So he's going to Night March, taking a knockout. We're sending the Shaman. We're going to Sky Return for 30, knocking out the Joltik. Um, okay, and I'll see Drew's turn. He's going to promote the Shaman. I'm not sure why my computer is being like this, but there's a Dimension Valley coming down. Going to get rid of that Forest of Giant Plants, and uh, going to Zerosic. Get rid of the Flowstone off the Shaman. And I think it was a Zerkov Shaman. I'm not sure what just happened. I'm not sure why my computer did that while recording. But, um, yeah, I think he's roasting the Flowstone off the Shaman, the one we promoted. And now we can't retreat the Shaman, uh, which is kind of bad for us. I'm going to look through Drew's discard pile. Okay. And let's see what's all in there. I really don't think Drew can, like... Yeah, I'm pretty sure Drew can't retreat and DCE. If I realize there's an AZ in there, I'm going to Sky Return for 30, send the Vessel Queen. And on a Drew's turn, uh, there's about 30 damage counter through the pin, but we're going to get dice out here in a second. There we are. So 30 damage on the Shaman. The first time we've ever done damage. And there's Sycamore. He did have the AZ in his hand, but there's no DCE. We see Drew conceded the game in the Vessel Queen Valpoom. Taking the win against the Night March deck. I'm not sure why my computer did that for the one that one couple of seconds. I'm not sure. I wasn't watching the computer why it did that. But hopefully you enjoyed this video. And you can see why Vesquim Falvum is such a strong deck against Night March. I mean, not being able to play your item cards. Such a big thing. Especially since he can't use his puzzle time. To get back his DCs, it's pretty much an auto win. Uh, not It's not 100% auto win. It can lose. Don't, don't worry. Night March can beat pretty much anything. I've seen it done multiple times. But hopefully you enjoyed this episode. Uh, or this... Tennessee State's round number one. Like I said, for each video, we're going to put the deck list of each player up. We're going to try to at least. And then we're going to showcase the game. If you have any suggestions, let me know. We will be doing this for the next three weeks because I have Tennessee, Arkansas, and then Alabama. But hopefully you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Alrighty. Bye.